Hey everyone, my name is Jack. Welcome back to the channel. I cover a variety of topics as they relate to investing and personal finance. So if you like that sort of content, be sure to have a look around the channel. And if you like what you see, be sure to subscribe. But this is another episode of my M1 Finance tutorial series where I'm going over all of the benefits, drawbacks, and features of M1 Finance, this brokerage right here. It is a free to use brokerage, so I'd highly recommend checking it out. And full disclosure, I am an affiliate of M1 Finance. And if you use my link down in the description below, open up an account and eventually fund that account. Account, I might get a small commission, which would help out the channel a lot, and hopefully you get a great brokerage out of it. But if you want to check out any of the other tutorials in this series, check out my link in the description below to that playlist, and I'll also include it at the very end of this video, so you can check out all the other features with M1 Finance. But today I want to go over the research tab with M1 Finance when you're actually trying to build a portfolio on this platform and all the nice little news features that it has with it. So if you hit the research tab up here, you have market news as the first tab, and it'll just give you general news about the stock market, the economy, good amount of political news as well since we've had, for example, recently we had the stimulus bill that was passed. So it's going to give you all the general economic news. That's not unique to really any one brokerage. They all do that. But if you actually go over here to stocks, then you can actually see all of these stocks available on M1 Finance and you can organize them by a few sortable categories, one of them being market cap, dividend yield, the price history, as in what has risen the most in whatever this uh, period you have is. So over one year, two years, or five years, and then also the price to earnings ratio. And you can go over here to the left and you can set ranges of those uh, different categories. So for example, if you only want companies that have a PE of under 20, then you could do that. And now it will only give you companies with less than 20 price to earning ratios. So if you want to do something like that, that's very easy to do here. And you can also change it by dividend yield if you're trying to build a dividend focused portfolio. So that's a really nice little feature. It's very easy to sort different stocks there. And you can also go down here to sectors and you can pick a particular sector that you're interested in. For example, maybe you want to check out uh, utility companies. And then here's a list of all the utility companies on the market. So you can do that as well if you're trying to build a particular section of your portfolio. And it actually goes down even further further into specific industries within a particular sector. So it's pretty easy to start sorting down and doing some generalized research on stocks. It's not going to give you a tremendous amount of data. For example, let's uh, go to Dominion Energy right here. It will show you any of the latest news on the stock, which is really helpful if you want to stay up to date on a particular stock and see breaking news that might have come out about it, which hopefully you're checking news on the stocks that you own if you're trying to run your own portfolio. And it'll generally give you some other info up here as well. You can It actually links to Dominion's website, which is nice, so you can check out the actual company website. And it'll give you some basic info there. And then up here you have market cap, their price earnings ratio, and dividend yield. But it doesn't really get much deeper than that. It's Pretty surface level data, I have to say. It is more helpful for keeping up with the news, but if you really want to get into the financials of a company, you really should look up their financial statements, maybe even go to Yahoo Finance, which gets a little deeper into their financial data, but you're not really going to find too much of that here on M1 Finance. Now, they don't only have stocks, but they also have funds or really ETFs, which are technically a type of stock, but if you wanted to invest in ETFs rather than individual companies, you can do that as well, and they have plenty of options that pretty much any brokerage would have as well. So if you want a low cost ETF to create a very diversified portfolio, you can do that too. And same thing goes for the categories. If say you only want a bond fund, you can click bonds here. And now there you go, you have all the bond ETFs available. So you can create a bond portfolio and you can create your own watch list as well up here. So you can keep track of a particular set of stocks. If you are thinking about maybe buying them or just want to keep up uh, with the news on those stocks, you can do that here as well. I have just started using it recently and it is helpful for since when you're looking at tons of different stocks in a given week, it can be easy to maybe forget about one or miss some news about it. So that's helpful for checking in there. And if you don't want to do any research yourself, you can go up here to Expert Pies and they will actually give you pre-built portfolios totally free of charge. So you can actually do that to build a portfolio very quickly. And that's assuming you don't just copy a portfolio from another M1 Finance investor. Because like I said in a previous episode, you can actually copy and share portfolios to other people who are on M1 Finance. I include mine in the description to my M1 Finance series where I'm building a $100,000 portfolio in that platform. So you can actually check that out and copy my portfolio. I'm not a financial advisor, but if you want to check it out and use it maybe as a start to your research, you can do that. And it's very easy to get started that way. In any event, definitely do your own research and M1 Finance can be a nice way to get started with that research. But like I said, M1 Finance actually creates pies that you can use for yourself. Uh, for example, they have these ones mimicking hedge funds. So you can click on that and then you can see you could 
if you wanted to use Berkshire Hathaway's general portfolio, but don't actually want to invest in Berkshire Hathaway directly, or more importantly, if you want to adjust a Berkshire Hathaway type portfolio, you can do that. And they have others here as well, but you can see here for Berkshire, you can, it'll show you all the holdings within it. Obviously not every hedge fund has only publicly traded companies. This is only going to be the public companies within a hedge fund. So keep that in mind. It's not like it's a perfect match, but it could be a nice way to get started. Maybe get inspiration when you're trying to build your own portfolio, see what some of these bigger funds are doing. And it's a nice little feature that they have in the platform. So that's one thing you can do as well when you're actually trying to build a portfolio. That's pretty much it. The research tools in M1 Finance are not overly complex. They're not super deep either, but it is good for keeping up with news on a particular company or the general market as well, which is nice. And it's pretty easy to go through like pretty much everything in M1 Finance. It's very intuitive and easy to use. And if you don't want to really do much of your own research, granted, I really think you should when you're investing in your own money, uh, you can use expert pies in M1 Finance as a way to get started quickly. But that's all I've got for today. If you found this video helpful, definitely leave a like since it would help the channel out a lot and check out the remainder of this playlist if you're interested in M1 Finance and want to learn more about it. Or if you don't want to hear me talk about it anymore, definitely check it out for yourself by going down to the link in the description. Again, I am an affiliate with M1 Finance, but you can check it out, open up an account for free. There's no minimums or anything that you need to do to open it up and check it out. So I'd highly recommend doing that. But if you're at all interested in more investing content, be sure to subscribe since I put out new videos every single week and wouldn't want you guys to miss out. But until next time, take care.